All right, so filming this real quick off my phone. Life's been getting busy lately. I've been trying to get this short-term review on the Marin Alpine Trail 7 out. So in an attempt to put out this content and go ahead and give you guys information, if you're looking to buy this bike, I think I will cover everything you need to know about it from my opinion. Bottom line up front, I don't think this is the right bike for everybody, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the full-time enduro bike that I choose to stick with, but let's go ahead and get into that, and then I'll wrap up a little bit more towards the end of this video and let you guys know exactly why I'm saying that right now. All right, so Marin Alpine Trail 7. You can see the Alpine Trail right there, the number seven right up there on the top. I really like this color with that green kind of not black fade but just a solid black in the rear green up front with those orange graphics and then that nice marin logo going down the down tube protection this bike is an enduro aluminum bike um definitely this is this is a size extra large definitely not the lightest bike this bike weighs in at 36 pounds eight ounces when i threw it on the scale it's got a linkage driven single pivot frame design, which means there goes a single pivot, the whole rear end pivots around that point, And then you got the rocker link right here that enables them to be able to adjust how that shock uh, performs and how it ramps up. I'll get a little bit more into that shocks performance, but let's just go ahead and go over the base spec on this. So you got, a 160 mil rock shocks yari fork up front you got that deluxe select rear shock right there from rock shocks 150 mils of travel in the rear this bike is powered by the shimano dior drivetrain i've had no issues with that drivetrain really like the way it shifts pretty happy with shimano um, does have the more budget friendly FSA cranks. I kind of wish this thing had Dior cranks because I really like the way those Dior crank arms look. And these are 170 mil length cranks. So they could be just a little bit shorter, especially on an enduro bike like this. You can see I did throw the one up pedals on there. So that's one little, I guess you could call it upgrade that I've done to this bike. Although bikes don't come with pedals. We all know that. For the dropper post on this, it's got the Trans X dropper, 170 mil dropper on this size extra large. You can see isn't quite long enough, so it'd be nice to have it a little bit longer, but that's not, I mean, that's pretty standard for any mountain bike that you're gonna get. It's got the Marin saddle on there. I love that it's got the little orange accents on there. It goes really good with the other orange decals on this bike. For the cockpit up here, you got the Marin bars right here and stem nice short 35 mil stem which is kind of good sometimes on budget bikes they'll have a longer stem and when you're riding an enduro bike like this you definitely just want that nice short stem for that good downhill performance i think these are a 780 width on there so right about what i like i like the width on there you can see i got the hell's gate these are my new favorite grips by trail one hell's gate grips really cool design on these i'll throw a link down in the description and you guys can check those out brian from bkxc even gave me a discount code for you guys so i'll throw that uh, link in the description as well um, we got the shimano brakes these are the mt420 four piston brake calipers right there two or three rotor up front powered by the 4100 brake levers so bigger two finger brake levers some people would like them to be one finger that comes on the fancier models of this but i've been pretty happy with how these perform i like that this bike even though being a budget bike comes with that kind of uh, matchmaker set or shimano calls it like the i-spec ev set where the shifter is mounted right to the bottom of the brake lever uh, on the rear of this it's got a 180 rotor in the rear and it is spec with metal pads on there so that's good to see um, for the wheels you can see in the back i have a bond trigger tire on the back right there it's got the marin wheels and it came spec with these v flow snap tires right here 29 by 
just a bit too sticky, a bit too aggressive for a rear tire. I kind of like the way it's feeling with this tire up front and a faster rolling tire in the rear. I did the tubeless tire conversion on this. So you can see I got the Trail 1 stem right there. Once again, throw the links in the description to the Trail 1 with a discount for that. Um, and the one cool thing about this bike is it does come tubeless ready rims and tires and the rims are completely taped up. So really all you have to do is get the tubeless valve stems, throw some sealant in there. We'll take the tubes out obviously, and this bike is ready to go tubeless. So the spec on this bike, I've been pretty happy with. Um, the overall performance of these budget parts I like. One of the biggest things I like about this bike is the upgradability. That Yari fork, you can easily upgrade the damper on this and basically turn that into a Lyric Ultimate. When it comes to the drivetrain, Shimano drivetrains, as most of you guys probably know, you can easily throw an upgraded derailleur on there. When you change out the cassette, you could always throw a different cassette, although I see no issues with the Dior cassette on there. You can upgrade the shifter on this from the Dior to like an SLX or an XT shifter, which can increase the performance of your drivetrain. So there's just little budget touches you can do throughout this bike. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, the rear shock, being a rock shocks rear shock, it's gonna be really easy to find tokens to get that thing dialed in. The brakes, with this being Shimano brakes, you can actually just upgrade just the levers on this if you wanted one finger levers and keep those MT420 brakes and improve the performance just a little bit on that. So that's a lot of the things that I like about this bike. However, some of the things that I didn't like about this bike was just the overall performance, the way it rode. This bike is definitely like super downhill capable. It's got, for a size XL, it's got a 515 reach, 63.5 degree head tube angle, nice steep 78 degree seat tube angle right there. So definitely got that like long slack and a nice low bottom bracket. So great downhill performance on this bike. However, one of the things I think this bike kind of lacked was just that overall kind of, I'm used to a little bit more poppy, playful, kind of snappy bike that can pop off like any little jump or hit that I want to jump off. And I just didn't feel that with this bike. Also, when I came into some tighter corners, really trying to corner this bike, and uh, snap it around some like really tight switchback style like berms. I had a really hard time keeping that front wheel down. Kind of always felt like I was just like hanging off the back of the bike right there, having a hard time to keep my weight on the front wheel. And I'm not saying that's completely due to this bike. Part of that could just be poor, you know, rider technique on my part. But I just couldn't help but feel, you know, just kind of think that maybe this isn't the perfect bike for me. Maybe I need to find a bigger, like longer travel enduro bike if it's gonna be solely downhill, um, just like capable like that. Let's talk about some of the things, like this bike does really well smashing down steep, steep sections in rocky, chunky sections. So if you're the type of rider that you don't care as much about popping off every single little jump, if you're the type of rider to where you really just want that ultimate stability, that ultimate grip with those nice grippy tires and ability to just smash through that rocky chunk like nothing, this is gonna be a great bike for you. But if you're the type of rider like me to where you want the enduro bike travel because you wanna be able to hit bigger drops and ride that big nasty chunk, but you want a bike that's a little bit more playful, this might not be the right bike for you. So I know that was kind of like a quick down and dirty run through on this bike. Definitely not as polished as some of the other videos I like to put out. No fancy editing, editing in this one, you guys. Just kind of me going off the cuff. I think I'm going to continue to look for an enduro bike that really suits the type of riding I like to do. I've also thought about um, finding a trail bike and reached out to my local bike shop, Trek dealer. 
uh, to find a trail bike that might suit my needs a little bit better. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. I got more bikes coming, more bike reviews coming, more opportunities, more discount codes like the one that I threw down in the link in the description of this video for Trail One Components. Check that one out. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Marin Alpine Trail 7. Let me know if you guys have any questions. But most of all, get out there, ride your bikes, get stoked, go ride, and have some fun, people.